spectator side, Jerry Glenn, Bill Schultz, from Panorama City, California, the conventional front engine car. Garland's approaches the staging lights. He stages first, then Glenn. through the quarter mile with a 6.59 second elapsed time. He records top speed of the meet on this run at over 227 miles an hour. Don Garland's with low elapsed time of the meet at 6.55 seconds and over 216 miles an hour, and he wasted it all with a red light left on the starting line. Jerry Glenn, world champion, wins it all right here at Amarillo. Now that's what I call a race. You know, if you guys would just listen to me, that could be us. We could be number one by next year. You two could get a car together. I've told you a hundred times, I can't get the bread. Stan, your old man will give you the money in a minute. I'm not willing to pay the price. Yeah, that would mean cut his hair, shave his beard, and sell his bike. <laughs> Norm, you could get the money. Hey, my old man won't go the race routine under any circumstances. He gets his allowance, and that's it. Wow. Well. Someday, I'm going to get me a ride in a rail, and I'm going to show those guys how it's done. Why don't you be happy running your car in grudge nights? Yeah, running a rail is a lot harder than it looks, Jeff. All right, all right. Well, next year, when I'm number one, remember, I asked you guys to be with me. What are you doing here? Give me a little sugar. Jeff, right? you'll get grease all over me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I tried to call you this morning. Where were you? I was over at Stan's. You spend too much time over there. What's the matter? Don't you prove your own brother? Oh, don't be silly, Jeff. Stan's been degenerating ever since he left. Degenerating? He's just a free soul, that's all. I don't want to talk about Stan. I've got to go. Wait a minute. You just got here. I know, but... Oh, by the way, Mother and Father are leaving for Europe next Friday. We're having a Bon Voyage luncheon, and we expect you to be there. and you coming to the strip Wednesday? No, I've got a million things to do. I'll see you Friday. Tempest up in smoke down the pit lane. Here comes the Dodge Challenger. On the top end, the Pontiac, the lap time of 17.56. The right lane losing at 18.01. Hey, Jeff. Hi. What happened to you? I'm not used to seeing Jeffy boy take it. <laughs> Run so bad. Thought I had a new trick. It didn't work. Right. Sheila didn't come out again, huh? Sheila, come out here? <laughs> you must be kidding. 
It's just as well I wouldn't want Sheila to see me performing like that. Damn, I thought I had the answer. See me bogged down on the line? Oh, that's so sad. Really sad. Julie, why don't you take a walk and uh, see what you can get into for a while? Okay, Norm. Last time you'll play clown with my car. Cool it, Ronnie blew it, that's all. Damn right he blew it. It's a thousand bucks worth of engine right down the line. What'd you expect me to do? what I expect you to do? I expect you to do shut it down, that's what. Cool, Ron. That's cool. No, I mean, it'll be better next time. Next time you'll be watching somebody else take a ride. Get your stuff and get out of here. You're through. Giant killer Volkswagen on the right lane, the big Oldsmobile on the left side with the big drag slicks on the back. They're ready. And look out. Volkswagen grabs the gear and wheel spins again. And he is gone. The Oldsmobile having problems missing a gear. The VW, a national record holder. He stops the timers. Get this. One one hundredth of a second over the national record for his class. That's an eye gap. Mike. Why don't we get something to eat? Yeah, who's buying? <laughs> oh, don't you guys ever have any money? Come on, I'll buy you a hamburger. Inside, the Corvette, Dodge Challenger down the right lane. The Corvette moves ahead as a stronger class car. He stops the wind light, but shuts it off at a 1411. Speed of 79 miles an hour. The Challenger, 1752 at 82.53. Oh. <laughs> I could have ripped that one off before I had my trick carburetor. Sure, you could have. Oh. Sorry for him. Who? Oh. Yeah, who's he? Larry Jordan. He just lost his ride. He got fired? Yep. Cole and Quinn let him go. Should have heard Ron. Wow, was he hot. Hey, I know those guys. You thinking what I'm thinking? What? They're gonna need a driver, right? Right. Right. Hey, don't get involved with them. Why not? Larry was their third driver in two months. Yeah? Before that, Ray Brink was killed driving their first car. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, Stan, Stan. You know, all you ever do is talk negative. Well, you once in your life try and talk a little positive. Listen, Jeff, uh, I'm gonna go talk to Cole. Will you just leave it to me? Yeah, I'll go with him. I know Dave. All right. I know how bad you want to drive, Jeff. But if you get the gig and they end up canning you, man, you're going to have one hell of a time getting another ride. Yeah, come off that stuff, Cole and Quinn were fighting at the top last year. Yeah, but they've come apart since. It's just bad luck. Yeah, real bad. Well, we'll find out, won't we? OK, don't Seatbelts on and strapped up tight. If you need to wear a helmet, make sure it's cinched up tight also. Tonight we have co-driver drags in effect so you can take your friend or girlfriend down the track with you. Just make sure they also have their seatbelt hooked up and bring them up in lanes one through five. Brackets will be starting at eight o'clock tonight, so first call for all money brackets into the lanes. Starting at eight o'clock, bracket one in lane 16, 17, 18, and 19. Bracket two, should be in lanes 15, 14, 13, and 11, which is backwards. The high school bracket's in lane 9 and 10. And for you time-only cars, you can bring them up in lanes 1 through 6. We'll be running time trials all tonight. If you lose your race, you can come back and still make time trials until we close up at 10 o'clock tonight. So, Irwindale on Tuesday nights, co-driver and drags, and co-driver insurance in effect. Make sure your passenger is all strapped in. Take them down the track with you. Real fun experience. Co-driver dragging at Irwindale. Kathy's Rebellion Dodge. She stops the timers at 14, 12, elapsed time. Well? Well. 
Oh, yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> it's in the bag. You're putting me on. Yeah, I'm putting you on. Tomorrow morning at 11.30, you and I have an appointment at the Cole and Quinn Racing Stable. What do you think about that? You're kidding me. Thanks, man. <laughs> that must have been some sales pitch. Oh, you should have heard him. Uh, well, let's not bore everybody with the details. Listen, when we get there tomorrow, I'll do the talking to Ron. Ron, I guarantee it. You know, with your great ability, you two guys and Jeff will make one hell of a team. You know, if you could have seen the performance Jeff got out of that injected gas in Canada, well, you'd be more impressed with him than I am. How come I haven't read about you in the papers, Jeff? Well, that's because I know he didn't get much press now. But that's because he raced on strips outside the association. And you know as well as I do, outside the association up there, they don't give you the time of day, let alone acknowledge a great driver. Why didn't she use the association strips? He drove for a hayseed who uh, raced as a hobby and who wouldn't travel that far from home. And with a short racing season up there, well, Jeff just decided to come down here and take on the heavyweights. Besides that... Why don't you let Jeff do the talking? Sure. You know, Jeff, there's a big difference between a gas-injected car and a top fueler. Training a driver takes a lot of money, and that's something I'm very short of right now. An investment in a driver might put you back in the winner's circle. You haven't been there in a while. Well, that's your answer. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Train your own driver your way, get yourself back up on top of the ladder, and when you guys are world's champs, you don't even have to thank me. Why don't we see if he fits in the car? It's a good idea. Get in the car, Jeff. Wait, wait, Ron. Go ahead. You know, I could bring this car back to the top and give me the chance. If you don't, you're cheating yourself. You can do it. You can do it, Ron. I okay, guarantee Okay, okay. We'll take you out to the track tomorrow and see if you can qualify for your driver's license. I sure hate to go this route, don't you? Well, it's different. But it might work. If you can drive half as fast as Norm here can talk, you must be a winner. So I really don't know what more to say, except that uh, Jeff just got tired of those no-name, no-publicity tracks and decided to come down here and take on the heavyweights. That's quite a step up for a guy with no reputation. <laughs> Yesterday, he couldn't get a ride on a roller coaster, and now he's in with the fabulous Colin Quinn. Hey, Norm, stop selling. He's already got the job. Well, that's true, but uh, a little publicity, especially coming from the best in the business, never hurt anyone. Right, Paul? He's absolutely right, Stan. People are going to want to know who this character is. Well, I've had it. Chris, let's go turn in this headline material. Paul, it was nice meeting you. Take care. You too. Sound all right? Not too bad. I've detuned it some, so you'll have an easier time getting used to it. Anything I can do? No, I'll just keep your mind on the driving. We'll get it ready for a half pass. All right. I'll be back in a minute. I can't believe your luck. That was Paul Quigley. Huh? Paul Quigley just happens to be a very important photographer and drag racing writer. And as a favor to me, he's going to do a story and picture layout on you. No, no, man. Who is the girl? I don't know. Uh, uh, Chris somebody. I don't know. Chris, huh? Look, Norman, why don't you lay off that PR story? I mean, you're going to blow the whole thing for him. What do you think of that monster? Oh, hey, you know, when that engine starts, even with the earplugs, I still can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your way. <laughs> Maybe, but he's had it with Sister Sheila. What? Don't you remember? Airport, luncheon. Bye-bye, Daddy. Oh, no, no, no. You folks left today, man. Sheila's gonna kill me. Right. Were you there? You don't think they'd be seen in public with me, do you? <laughs> we said our goodbyes this morning. What, has he got his own fan club already? No, they're just his friends. Hey, later. Yeah. Hey, Jeff? Good luck.
You know, he's really pulling it off. Yeah. If you get this kind of high watching Jeff take his trip, why don't you let them strap you into that monster? <laughs> Wrong. You see, I like my rushes to last a little longer than six seconds. Besides, risk this neck on the thrills of that Sunday mob? <laughs> no way. Right now, I'd like to break it. You know, Stan, I've never seen you help Jeff in anything. Tell Jeff I'll see him later. Aren't you going to stick around and see how he does? He'll do just fine without your help. Ready? No burnout. Just stay slow and wait for the green. Right. Got to stage faster. Remember that engine has 1,500 horsepower and she'll do what you make her do, but you've got to make her do it. And when you start mixing the fuel yourself and I say I want an 85% mixture, that's what I mean. Not 84, not 86. 85% mixture. As soon as you get to know our between rounds checkout routine, you'll have your own specific jobs. Do everything the same every time and you won't make any mistakes. When you drain the oil, always check it for fuel and water. Check for debris. Never just dump it out.
You have to watch everything that happens on a run. That way you can give me some help on tuning the engine. The plugs give us some very good indications of what's happening in a cylinder. But you can see things on a run we can't. I don't seem to get a chance to notice anything about the engine on the run. It's, it's over too fast. When we start entering meets, you pay attention to me and just me on that starting line. I don't care what a starter tries to get you to do. You do what I tell you to do. You've got to use your tail for something more than filling the seat. You've got to learn to think with it, feel the vibrations. You've got to learn to read the header flame. You've got to be able to do more than come off the line a split second ahead of anyone else. You've got to have guts enough to shut it down when things aren't right. That doesn't take guts. No, maybe not guts. Brains. That's the day I know you're a pro. The day you can shut it down with a grandstand full of people watching and a big purse on the line. to meet Jerry Glenn, Bill Schultz. Jerry? Jeff Clark. Nice How you doing, Bill? Hi, Jeff. Bill and Jerry watched you run and certified your license. Yeah? That's just my first step to number one, ain't it? Yeah, it's a lot of steps. Are well, you gentlemen going to be seeing the back end of this thing pretty soon? Uh, why don't you go find Norm and call it a day, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, he's got some kind of spirit. <laughs> what else can I say? Hey, Jeffrey, what's happening? Man, you're looking at a licensed driver. Congratulations, man. I hope you know what you're doing. Sheila's out by the pool. Better wear your shin guards. Yeah. Maybe I should throw my hat in first, huh? Right now? She'll settle for nothing less than your head. Hmm. You know, you're gonna give the neighborhood a bad name with that hog park there. This plastic paradise could use a little depreciation. Oh, pretty lady. To what do I owe this honor, Mr. Clark? Well, I, uh, I got some good news. I'm not interested in anything but an apology and a good explanation. Come on, man, you don't have to be that way. Look, I said I was sorry I was busy. Busy with what? You missed the lunch and you didn't even call. Jeff, I thought you were more concerned about father Look, and the man, I got, a, I got a ride with a top fuel team. I got my license today. Listen, Norm's having a thing tonight. You want to, uh... Oh, Jeff, you know I don't like that circle, and I certainly don't like you around those people. Those people? Yeah. You know, racing means a lot to me. I'm not going to give it up. Well, Jeff, I'm not the kind of girl that can get involved in that syndrome. I've tried to discourage you, but you insist on hanging around. Now, look, you. 
I am never going to be like your old man, which is what you want me to be. Now, I don't want to be part of your lifestyle, so don't be a part of mine. Well, maybe it's best if we just split up then. I'm going to join mother and father for a few weeks in Europe. Whatever's fair, send me a postcard. Send me a picture of the post. Goodbye, Jeff. What's she gonna do? Punish you by running off to Europe with the folks? I didn't see you get here. Well, uh, what do you think? Huh? My new group. Yours? Yeah, well, they asked me to manage them, you know. I've heard better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you give up on me already? Never let that be said. You know, when you got a special talent, you have to spread yourself a little thin. Up so. Ron and Dave show up yet? No, I said somebody had to work on your car. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Why don't you guys kind of get into my music and I'll circulate for a while? Good idea. Come on. Good time? Sure, Normie baby. Great party. Great party. Here's the Normie baby. Paul, I think you've had too much. I'm fine. Sure, he's fine. Be right back. One more double and he will be. love these racing guys, don't you? <laughs> Your turn, sporty. Oh, Jeff, uh, you know Paul Quigley. Paul? Uh, and this is Chris uh, somebody. Lewis. Chris Lewis. Yeah, I think I saw you out at the track, didn't I? That's right, and she's with me. Sorry. I've been doing some investigating about you, boy, and I found a lot of interesting things. What the hell is he talking about? I don't know. This guy bugs me. Paul, let's go, please. Listen, if you got something to say, let's just say it quietly, huh? Hey, I talked to a buddy of mine in Canada today. Well, well come on, the air will do you good. Hey, 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 take it easy, Paul. He's never heard of you or the car you said you drove. You're nothing but a wise kid trying to break into the big time with a bunch wait, of lies. Yes, You're a minute. phony. Wait, wait a minute. You're dead, man. You and your team. That's crazy, man. Hey, 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 Jeff, come on now. Don't go away, man. I mean, we can square this thing with Paul Quigley. You square it. You started it. Hey, well, don't get so hot. I mean, I got you a ride, didn't I? I mean, is that the thanks I get? Thanks. Man, you have really cost me. So far today, I lost my girl. I've been called a liar, and I damn near had to deck a guy. I should be feeling on top of the world, but I don't. I got a rotten taste in my mouth. One more thing, man. You stay away from me. Hey, Jeff. I mean, you try to help a guy, and that's the thanks you get.
You fellas have been doing a lot of work. Where's Ron? Jeff, you better get the hell out of here before Ron comes back. What? News travels fast in this game. Today, you're not very popular with Ron. What the hell are you talking about? What'd he say? Nothing much good, that's for sure. Doesn't matter. I think your driving career is over around here. Just like that, I'm through, huh? Well, I'd like to talk to Ron about that. You're out as far as Ron's concerned. I got an idea. Huh? Ron's about had it with racing. I think we can buy him out for a few thousand. You drive, I'll be crew chief. Uh, I don't think I can c come up with that kind of money. How about your friends? Want to take them up with something? It's okay, Dave. Why don't you get lost? Get out of here and stay out of here. I'd like to explain, right? Really. Explain what? You know what you almost did? You almost killed yourself out there. Why ever believe that crazy story of yours? I'll never know. I wanted a chance. How else would I get a chance? There's no room for chance in this business. One thing I don't need is an inexperienced driver. Look, if it's another driver you and Dave have in mind, that's something different. But if it isn't, you need me. <laughs> I need you? Well, look at it this way. You've got an investment in me. I got a license. You got a learner's permit, that's all. Ron, with your training, we could make this team work. I believe that. I just need another chance. You think you need another chance? Well, I'll tell you something. Maybe I don't have a driver, but I'll get another one. Ron, I'm going to make it to the top. I'd like to do it with you, not against you. You're not going to find another driver that wants to drive as much as I do. You are crazy. You want to get yourself killed. OK, I'll give you another chance. Is it I with you, Dave? Yeah. Only keep your mouth shut. One thing I don't like is a loud mouth driver. And start showing up here to work on the car. I quit my job, I'll be here. We got a lot of work to do. I'll take you over the lion's track and you can use a different starting system and try a new strip. Spend a lot of time watching the other guys stage and leave. I don't have time for a big training program, so you better learn, you better learn fast. Crew working hard or hardly working? What is this, Hank the Crank's pickup crew? It's right there. Yeah, I'll wait till I grind that crank square for you. Yeah, this week's new hot sit up. Thanks for the service, fellas. We appreciate it. I'll give you a call when it's ready. Thanks. Tonight, the spotlighted Lions is on the professional cars and drivers. But every Wednesday night, over 200 drivers enjoy fun and grudge racing here at the beach. All type of cars are welcome. Seat belts required. You can even carry a passenger. The idea is to get drag racing off of the street and onto the drag strip where it belongs. Just two bucks for five hours of fun and grudge racing every Wednesday. All right, Jeff, go on up the line and start watching. It sounds like they're getting some cars ready. All right, see you later. Dave will come and pick you up when we're ready.
timer stops at 6.42 seconds, 218 miles per hour. He might have shut off even a little early. Moving off the rollers right now to try to find a spot in tonight's 16-car show is Jack McLeod of San Diego, California. McLeod's engine sounding just a little bit weak on the burnout. A 6.85 will qualify him for the moment, but it's doubtful that that'll stand for the onslaught of qualifying to come. Don Moody will be next to the starting line. Chief Mechanic Wes Cerny pouring down the burnout solution. Typical Cerny horsepower on the burnout. Cerny checking the engine temperature with his hand on the cylinder head. If it's too cold, it certainly will not come up with the right elapsed time. Where'd he go? He's feeding his ego with Chris. Damn it. He's got more important things to do. Listen, I want to apologize for the other night. I hope I didn't ruin your evening. Oh, that's cool. It wasn't your fault. Yeah, but you know, everything's been happening to me that day, and, uh, you know, your friend's got a big mouth. Oh, <laughs> Paul's not usually like that. He was, um, uh, he was drunk. <laughs> I don't think he knew what he was saying. He knew what he was saying, all right. It's just that everything he was saying was true. I just want to find out what he's got against me, that's all. Oh, it's not you. Um, it's Ron that he's trying to hurt. Uh, you remember uh, Ray that used to drive? Um, the guy that got killed? Yeah. Well, uh, he was a very good friend of Paul's, and Paul seems to blame Ron for his death. Well, that was an accident. Well, I, I thought so, too. The I guess you could get Paul to give you his reasons. Whew. Fat chance of that. He sees me talking to you, and it's all over. Paul doesn't care who I talk to. We just work together, that's all. Hey. Found out one thing today. Listen, do me a favor, will you? Find out what Paul's reasons are? I'll try. See ya. Later. The first pair in side-by-side -side qualifying will be Norm Wilcox in the left-hand lane driving the Skyjacker and the rich route terror James Warren in the right-hand lane, both rear-engine dragsters. Lions is probably the only track in drag racing where the drivers don't even flip a coin for the lane choice. They're both absolutely equal. The cool ocean air here at Lions makes for record-breaking times just about every time the top fuel dragsters arrive here for a show. burnout. But Norm Wilcox really flogs it. Wilcox has to have strong equipment because he can be a savage when it gets down to the nitty-gritty. It'll 
take better than a 6.86 second run for either of these drivers to make the road trip. If they both do, they'll bump out the two cars in the 15th and 16th positions. Now, there'll be no winner or loser here. This is strictly qualifying, but both drivers' egos, I'm sure, are going to demand that they at least try to get there first. by both cars. It looks like Wilcox is going to cover Warren in the mid-range, and he does. He gets the wind light at the far end. 6.39 clocking. That'll push Wilcox into the number two spot at 223 miles per hour. A 6.63 should be good enough for James Warren. 212 miles per hour. Out of the staging lanes now is a new face to the Lions Drag Strip pit area. A boy named Jeff Clark driving the C&Q special of motorman Ron Cole and his partner Dave Quinn. It's been pretty tough sledding for the C&Q boys lately, and hopefully this new driver will provide the missing ingredient. But first, they've got to get him fully licensed. Now, Clark has passed all of the test runs, the physical and all of that, but he still has to run within 10% of the national elapsed time record, about a 686, before he'll be eligible for competition. it down completely. No speed or elapsed time really worth mentioning. You're a little off on that one. Yeah. Now you know it takes more than just aiming and hanging on. This will be the last call for all bracket competitors. In the lights qualifying, so he... Hey, Dave, listen to this. Last week in Vegas, this guy blows a blower off his car qualifying for the program. So he straps a spare blower on for the first round. Pow, he blows it off. So he comes running over to our car, wants to borrow my blower. I tell him, no way. Some people don't know when to quit. If I was crew chief, I'd do a lot of things different. Yeah, but you're not. Not yet. Frank, ready? Sure. You guys doing any running this week? Yeah, we're going up to uh, Irwindale for a couple. We're doing some testing day after tomorrow. You guys ought to come on out. Maybe you can get a runoff against somebody if Jeff's ready. Yeah, well, you know how it is. Ron's the boss. But I'll ask him. Hey, we got a photo session going with girls. Yeah, I'll be there. Well, see you guys later. Seriously, Dave, try to make it. I'll tell Ron. Okay, down from the far end, a little extra treat for you. Tuesday night race fans, a top fuel dragster to make some checkout runs. A Colin Quinn, double-A fuel dragster. Their new driver, Jeff Clark, taking a few early runs in the car. Jeff Clark drops the hammer. Good, strong burnout. The team rushing out to push him back as, of course, they don't have any reversers in this car. Top fuel dragster of Cole and Quinn. Pulling up ever so carefully, he's ready to go, stage light. How bad is it? A lot of water in the oil. Cracked cylinder. That's just great. So, we know one piston's gone. Boy, I hope that's all. Every time I put together a spare engine, the one I have blows up on me. It never fails. Well, 
Let's get on it, see how bad it is. Hello? Well, hi. I didn't expect to see you again. No, I just thought I'd come out and surprise you. I'm just having some lunch. Want to sit down? Have a cool drink or something? How you been, Jeff? That all we have to say to each other? Where are you working now? No place, just training with the cars, that's all. You didn't have to quit your job just because we had a little argument. I told Father I'd talk to you about that. Well, I thought under the circumstances that... Look, I just want to know if we have anything left between each other. That's all. We've had time to think it over. Well, how do you feel? I'd like to get back together. Does that mean you're willing to go back to work for Father and give up racing? Look, I'll meet you halfway. I'll come back to work, okay? I noticed you didn't say you'd give up racing. Man, you, you don't understand. You don't know what I went through to get this ride. I told you before, I'm not about to give it up. You will try to understand. Don't you know what it is to, to try to get to the top? So what do you get when you get to the top? It doesn't matter, man. It's, it's the satisfaction of knowing that you have done something. That was you that did it. Why do you think people climb Mount Everest? For the view? Oh, Jim. No, no, wait a minute. Let me finish. You know what it is? You know what you're afraid of? You're afraid of competing with the desire, with the need that I have. That's why you wanted me to go to work for your old man, because you wouldn't have to worry about competing with my job. Haven't you ever wanted to do anything on your own? Now, what does that mean? Well, I hope you never have to find out. But you don't have what it takes. I have everything I want. Yeah. I guess you do, Sheila. Goodbye. Okay. Good. Why don't you step over here now? Movies. Fine. You want to go over there, Bill? Attention, down in the dragster pit. Since we have so many cars here today to do testing, that's great. Thanks, Ken. Like clear you off huh? and run right. you side by side. So I'll be down in the dragster pits with a list of the first round pairings. I'd like to get one of those in my scrapbook. All right. Let's go over there. I want to talk to you. Come on. I didn't want Paul to see us rapping. I don't think it's too good an idea if I'm going to start asking him all sorts of questions about Ron. Listen, Chris, you don't have to do this for me, you know? Oh, I don't mind. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, he asked me to drive him into town today, so I'll get a chance to rap to him then. Oh, oh. Uh, you coming back and see my run? Well, I'd like to, but I have to get ready for a job tomorrow. I see. With Paul, right? No. Uh, it's at Cedar Lake. Would you like to meet me there around noon? Why, uh... Maybe. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's gather up. Come on up. Yeah, All right, everybody here? Okay, here are the pairings in the first round. Frank Graff against Sherm Gunn. Okay. In top fuel, Mike Snively against Larry Dixon. Jerry Glenn, you race Norm Wilcox. Jeff Clark, you go against John Peters in the freight train. All right. Little John Lombardo right. against Ray Alley in the funny cars. All right, when y'all are ready, let's bring them up, all right? Let's roll. All Attention to the pits, please. The funny cars that are ready to run, please bring them to the starting line immediately. 
fuel alters, get ready. All the fuel dragsters move to the front of dragster staging, and the drivers sit up immediately, please. Beneath the tower now, in the left lane, Little John Lombardo, Chrysler powered Mega Funny Car. The right lane, Ray Alley's Chrysler powered Mustang Funny Car. Kathy Lombardo is helping husband John get ready in the left lane. Over in the right lane, Ray Alley's crew getting the car ready to run.
Mike Snively making the turnaround in the Annan and Snively rear engine double A fuel dragster, followed by Larry and Pat Dixon's full body front engine fuel dragster.
214.01 miles per hour. Bob Barabbas at a 712 at 202.31 miles per hour. Somebody told me this was a test day, but it sure seems more like a race day. When your cars are ready to make their next runs, please notify the tower. Who's the ET? Not too bad, 660. Yeah? Who do we race next? We can't afford it. Yeah, Dave's right. Let's wrap it up for the day. I want any of you this weekend. This weekend, huh? Yeah, do you think you're ready to play for marbles? You're marbles. Thanks, Chris. Okay. I didn't think you'd come. I didn't think I would either. But you did. Yep, I did. I heard you did real well yesterday. Oh, you did, huh? Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people wanted to see you blow it because of the way you came on in the beginning. How about you? I'm glad I disappointed him. I plan on doing that again real soon. You know, I'm glad you came. Talk to Paul? Um, yeah, I did. Well? Well, he, he said that Ron didn't check the engine over properly. And that he knew that it was running rough all the time. Where the hell was Dave? Ron sent him on some kind of an errand or something. Uh, Jeff. I really think you better watch yourself with Ron. Yeah. It's funny, I never pegged him. I... I really thought he was into that car. Well, maybe that's it. What? Maybe he's into the car so much that he'd gamble anything just to win. Jeff. You know, it's really quiet up here, you know? I don't uh, think I've ever really been out of the city. Would you like to look around? Yeah.
I know that, I know that. <laughs> what is it? Nothing. Just yeah, starting all over again, you know. I... All the feelings and everything. It's just, I've been through all this before. You see, there's something that I've got to do. And nothing, nothing, nothing's going to stop me. I'm sorry. And you think I'll stop you? I won't. You know, it's the man has to be somebody. And right now, I, I, I'm nothing, you know? I'm just nothing, and I don't want to, I don't want to be that. I just got, I've got to somehow be somebody, you know? I know. Don't, don't do this unless you, unless you're willing to go, unless you're willing to stay with me. Ron, getting the mag check? Yeah. You got the socket for this over there? No, you got it on your side, Lass. The hell's the matter with you? Something I did? Not exactly. <clears throat> What's that supposed to mean? I try to get you on my team and you join Ron's. Well, the way I understood it, the three of us are a team. I'm tired of carrying Ron and making up for his mistakes. He's cost us one life already. You realize what you're saying? I was there. You don't think Ray's death was an accident then, huh? The engine was hurting and Ron pushed it too much. He raised the nitro and the engine blew. What do you think it's like being number two on a team like that? Where were you when Ron was checking the engine? Some stupid errand he sent me on. When I got back, he said everything was in great shape. But he lied. You've talked to Ron about this, haven't you? No way. He'd deny it. And people would listen to him because he's chief. And then he'd probably try to pin it on me. So until he quits or I get some money, I'm stuck. Well, that's treating somebody getting killed a little light, isn't it? Now that you know the score, if you quit, don't make any waves for me, okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was only going 45. Only 45? Let me see your license. You take it out. What's that other one? Top few. Thought those guys were professionals. Surprised at you, son. I knew. He's not showing. Well, there he is. I'll see you later. 
How come you're late? A little problem. Speeding ticket. What kind of nonsense is that? I don't make a habit of it. You know why they built those drag strips? To keep clowns like you off the highway. I don't like being called that, Ron. Oh, cool it, guys. Come on, Jeff. Get in your suit. So you trust me with the body now, huh? Yeah. Better perform today. Yeah. On the starting line, in the left lane, Tom Grill. In the right hand lane, it's John Rodek. There's the zero. And down that quarter mile, Grill is trailing in the tower side. At the finish line, it's Rodek there first. However, a lot of smoke from the rear of Rodek's machine. Rodek checks in at a good solid 665, 218.84. Grill is their second best at 701 lap time at 205.33 top end speed. Tony has the heat speed. Good run down that corner while the car really moving at the other end. Tony has the at 6.53 seconds. And he unforced top speed of this event at 232.55 miles per hour. They're both set. One hand reminds the green line. What a qualifying race this is. At the other end, it's Randy Allison, the Allison Brothers. Allison, 6.49 seconds, 206.42 miles per hour. Norm Wilcox, all right behind at 6.59. Top end speed, 226.10 miles per hour. Beneath the tower, the C&Q special of Cole and Quinn. New driver, Jeff Clark. Clark at the wheel brings the car up the conventional machine in the bleach box in the right-hand lane. The liquid traction compound, the sticky stuff being laid down by Ron Cole. Clark's all set. And the burnout. Tires are blazing across the starting line. Clark comes to a rest in the C&Q special on the track. Ron Cole and Dave Quinn out to assist to push him back to the starting line. They have to push these top fuel dragsters back as there is no reverse gear. The car is equipped with forward gear only. So Quinn and Cole out to assist their new driver, Jeff Clark, and they'll push him back. Jeff Clark now back to the ready line, the C&Q special. He'll bring the machine forward on his own with that 392 cubic inch Hemi Chrysler is pulsating away. Clark inches away from the starting gate. Now he's on the other end, 6.75 seconds, 215.22 miles per hour. Arlie Langlone, Langlone, and Langlone, run down the quarter mile. And the shoot comes out early for Langlone before the finish line. He runs 7.15 seconds, 185 miles per hour. And that does not qualify Langlow. He had to run a 680 or better, 680 or better to make the eight car field thus far in top fuel qualifying. Well, it was all right coming off the line. Pulled real hard, then halfway it just flattened out. Yeah, it sounded a little rich. I'm going to change the mixture. We'll never stay in the game with that, E.T. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to walk around and see who's here, right? Let's get ready for the next segment. Why don't you tell me you're coming? 
Oh, you've got enough on your mind. Oh, come on, what are you talking about? I saw you run. Yeah. It uh, looked a lot better than it was. Well, we're gonna try it again. It's an awfully tough one for your first meet. Yeah, a 16 car program would be a lot easier. <laughs> hey, uh, walk me back to the car, will you? Oh, no, you go on ahead. Will you celebrate with me if I win? For sure. We're ready to move over to staging. Just keep driving the same way. We'll do better the next time. We're ready for the next segment. Driver. Norm Welch, he also qualifies 667, 217.39. Frank Rock versus Tony and Rock and Rock. Rock was one, going 667 more quicker to make the eight car field. Rock at the finish line at 6.80 seconds, 680. That's not good enough. The speed of shutting off early, 204 miles per hour. The next car down the dragster fire row of the C and Q special of Cole and Quinn and trying to requalify in the program. They were in earlier, they were bumped out. So the new driver, Jeff Clark, makes a turnaround. He'll line up in the right hand lane. This will be the final top fuel dragster qualifier in this segment of top fuel qualifying. I'd like to have all stock car and a bracket racers, their cars, please, go to the stock car stage lanes for time trials after this run. completes his burnout. Cole and Quinn out there once again to assist him back in the starting line. Clark now back at the ready line, so this will be it, the final qualifying attempt of this segment. Clark now at the starting gate, he's all set, trying to requalify the C and Q special. The countdown, one end for the green light, Clark underway, the C and Q car C and Q car, they qualify, they requalify 6.66 seconds, 217.74. Side. Well, let's get it up. Yeah. See what those plugs have to say. Look good so far. Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. The hot car stage lanes have been closed. I repeat the lanes. Let's go watch and see if we get in. Two cars in the lanes. Go ahead. They will be the final okay, we'll drain and check that oil anyway. Salisbury already in the top fuel program with his earlier 651, trying to better his position here with a better run, hopefully in the low 640 second range. 
Salisbury brings his machine off the Salisbury Steak Special. He's pre-staged. 60 inches further to go for Salisbury. He's all set. One amber the green light. White Salisbury underway down the quarter mile. Salisbury at the finish line runs in with a 6.51. Bill Simon set to go on the storyline. One amber the green light. Simon's underway. Thunder it down that quarter mile. Trying to bump out Jeff Clark in the CNQ Special. Simon's at the finish line. He does it. He runs 6.65, bumps out Jeff Clark in a CNQ special, who were on the bump at 6.66 well, seconds. That's so drag Simon racing. Through for another meet. Time. Yeah. So that'll do it for top fuel. Sorry, top man. Oh, no, it wasn't your fault. This wasn't our day. I heard there's a car broke. We still got a chance. Okay. How are the plugs? It's like new. Did you check the oil out? Fine. I think the sparks are coming out of the new headers. Is everything all right with you guys? Yeah. We're ready. Number five car broke. You can have that spot if you want it. Who are we racing? Schultz and Glenn. Oh, man. We're here to race. Anybody. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Help me with these plugs, Jeff. Dave, mix the fuel. What percentage do you want? 87. Well, hey, Ron, I think I'm ready for these guys. Well, let's get it on. We'll find out. Dave Bowman stage is brand new Chevy Vegas station wagon. Bowman stage underway on the green light. Dave Bowman, a shakedown run, runs 7.29 seconds, speed 211 miles per hour. Jim Dunn, his rear engine Barracuda, on a checkout pass prior to elimination, shuts her off a little early, still runs a 698 at 209 miles per hour. What lane do you want, Ron? What lane do you want? Oh, I think I like the right. Flip you for it. Okay. Call it, Jeff. Heads. Cheers. Attention, please. We do need all top to fuel directors to suit up and stand by for the first round. First round pairings of top fuel eliminations will pit the Schultz and Glenn machine against the C&Q Special in on the break rule. Larry Dixon against White Salisbury. Randy Allison will race John Rodek. And Norm Wilcox against Norm Wilt in as an alternate. I'd like to remind all you first-time drag race fans here at Orange County that every Wednesday night we have grudge race, amateur, and co-driver drag racing. We do invite all first-timers, all amateurs, to come on and try your luck at quarter-mile racing. The friendly officials have some extra time to spend with you, the starting line crew, the fellows with time slip, and the tech inspectors. They'll be able to answer all your questions. So next Wednesday night, why don't you come on out to Orange County, 6 to 11, grudge race, amateur, and co-driver drag racing. I'm going to get the other bottle of compound. Well, there's a break in the action now, being an excellent time to step down to the snack bar, grab yourself some goodies. Then you might mosey on to the Orange County Raceway souvenir stand. Take a look at the uh, t-shirts down there, the jackets, the decals, the emblems, and of course the fine posters by Newport Productions, the big wall-sized posters, your favorite drag racing stars in action. You didn't use mix, you used pure nitro. How could you make a stupid mistake like that? That was no mistake. I told you, 87%. I wanted it straight. And watch this win my way. Wow, you blew it, Dave. Man, you've had it. We're not gonna run. You better take more chances. Jeff's luckier than Ray. He'll make it. You did the same thing to Ray, too, didn't you? It's part of the game. You really are sick.
Ladies and gentlemen, down the fire road to kick off the first round of top fuel eliminations, it'll be Jerry, the Hunter Glenn, the Schultz and Glenn machine, followed by his opposition, Jeff Clark and the C&Q special. Passing beneath the tower, first of all, it's world champion Jerry Glenn. He'll make the long turnaround line up at the left-hand tower side. Right behind Glenn, Jeff Clark makes the shorter turnaround. He'll line up the bleach box in the right-hand lane. Stop the car. Oh, uh, they, they, they pushed off. Stop, Stop the car. car. In the right hand lane, it's Dave Quinn laying down the traction compound for driver Jeff Clark. Both drivers are ready for their burnouts. Jerry Glenn that seems to be awaiting on Jeff Clark. Clark gets the signal. Clark's signaling. He's not moving. He's not moving at all. The motor sounds very ragged in the CQ special. But Clark's looking around. There seems to be some confusion. Glenn goes ahead on his burnout. And finally, Jeff Clark with the motor and the CQ special sound a little on the ragged edge. Both drivers having completed their burnout, Jerry Glenn's crew members pushing him back and missed the near tower side. The right hand lane, the crew members of Jeff Clark pushing him back. Both drivers are back to the ready line. There seems to be very much confusion on this starting line. We can't understand what's going on, but apparently the starting line crew are going to let him make the run. We still don't know the whereabouts of Ron Cole. World champion Jerry Glenn, the first driver to pre-stage in this the near tower side. Jeff Clark right behind in the right-hand spectator lane. Glenn, who usually prefers to stage last, moves into the stage beam. The RPM's up. Jeff Clark cleans out the motor, builds up the RPMs. Jeff Clark shuts it off. Jerry Glenn goes on for the single run, making it down that quarter mile. Glenn checks in at 6.51, 6.51 seconds, 221.89 miles per hour for the first round of single victory run. Actually, it was a very, very confusing first race, the first round of eliminations. And hopefully, a little later on, we can talk to one of these CNQ crew members. Looking off to the right of the tower, we now see Ron Cole running onto the starting apron, and there still seems to be fast pursuit. I got you! I got you! You're right! Get your gear and get off this track! I don't want to see you in this business again. Now get! White Salisbury. Cool it, Jack. Relax. Dixon is set, Salisbury is set. Dixon takes his burnout first of all. Now the burnout by Dwight Salisbury. Larry Dixon, the tower side, coming to a rest. His crew members assistant in back. That late model 426 type coming by. Are you all right? The crew members pulling him back to the starting line. Salisbury over to the right hand line, also being assistant. His Donovan 417 also sounds like it's ready to cut a big number. I'm losing the man. <laughs> No, you're not. You shut down when you were supposed to. You remember what I told you about that? It takes guts and it takes brains, and you got them both. You're going to go a long way in this business, and I'd like it to be with me. Nixon is in the beams. He's set. Salisbury is set. One amber light, the green light. They're all side by side down the quarter mile. 